Johnny's in the house. <laughs> Praise God. This is the night the Lord has made, and we will rejoice because we have a choice. Snap, we have a choice. You know, it's to our benefit. How many know that when you make right choices, other things fall into place? Amen. So the more wrong choices you make, the more difficult it gets. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So the only way to make right choices is to be led by the Spirit. That's the only way you can make right choices. Because He's called the Spirit of truth. He guides us to all truth. And He reveals everything that the Father has to us, to Jesus, and then to us. Because He wants to get us something. Amen? God is not trying to take anything. He's trying to get something to us. Would you turn to the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 26? Verse 26 said, Then God said, Let us make man in our image. According to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the beer, birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God said, I'm going to create a soul. I'm going to dress him with dust. I'm going to put them in my image. It says here, Then God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created him. In other words, male and female was in one. In other words, there was a creation of God. God is father and mother. Hello? He's both. He's not just father. He's father and mother. He's everything to me and you. So he comforts us as a father, and he comforts us as a mother. So God created man in his own image, male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. In other words, in his image and likeness is dominion, authority. So if you're not walking in his image and likeness, you're not walking in authority then. Because that is his image. Having dominion. Does everybody get it? Dominion. Authority. That's his likeness. That's who he is. So Adam's character was made in God's image. He was granted dominion, authority, and he had the compassion and character of a father and of a mother. In Genesis 2 and 15, Genesis chapter 2 and 15, it says, Then the Lord God took the man and put him in a garden to tend it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall what? Surely die. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. Out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. So Adam gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there still was not found a helper comparable to him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman. Man with a womb. And he brought her to the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She, she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. And they shall become one flesh. And they were both naked, and the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. 
There was pure love in God's presence. There was a purity. There was no shame. There was no evil. There was pure light. God warned about associating with what we call forbidden knowledge. Everyone say forbidden, forbidden. knowledge. That's what we're going to talk about. God warned them about there will be a forbidden knowledge that will kill you. If you avoid that forbidden knowledge, now we already talked about what the tree was, the tree of knowledge and evil was a serpent, amen? He said it will kill you. If its effects will overtake purity, love, and destiny of God's plan, it will also take you out of the light and into the darkness with no sight. You will have a desire for darkness. You will have a desire for lust. You will put yourself in a self-surviving mode. And as you come out of the light of God's presence into a life of sin. Why? Because that's what the forbidden knowledge promotes. In Exodus 28, I mean, Ezekiel, I'm sorry, Ezekiel 28. Forbidden knowledge. In verse 12, again, this forbidden knowledge would take Adam and Eve out of God's love, purity, righteousness, remove them from the destiny that he planned for them, or put them in a state of bondage. They'll begin to love darkness more than they would light. They would love sin more than they would righteousness. And they become lustful. In verse 12, Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre and say to him, Thus says the Lord God. Read it with me. You are the what? Seal of perfection, full of what? Wisdom. And perfect in beauty. You were needing the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardis, topaz, diamond, braille, onyx, jasper, sapphire, turquoise, emerald with gold. Again, he was dressed, he's talking about Lucifer, was dressed with these precious jewels and stones because at one time he was the praise and worship leader of the universe. The earth was known as the mountain of God and he saw all of God's creations. He knew all the formulas. He saw God create. He knew the physics. He knew everything about everything of God's creation. He was full of wisdom. God allowed him to know these things. God allowed him to see these things. God allowed him to understand these things. He was purity of light. He was an armor bearer of light. He said, the workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day that you were created. He was the praise and worship leader of the universe. He was the one that was instructing and establishing and bringing forth God's glory. But he became very accustomed. He became complacent. He became too familiar, losing the reverence and honor and respect the one who created him and gave him that position. In verse 14, he said, you are the anointed cherub who covers the universe with praise. He said, I establish you. You are on the holy mountain of God. You walk back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. In other words, he saw creation. You were perfect in your ways from the day that you were created till iniquity was found in you. 
In other words, he was full of wisdom. He was the seal of perfection, beauty. Again, he saw it all. He saw all the creative, he, he knew all the engineering things that God used. He saw God roll out his plans. Again, he was purity. He was with light. Then he stepped out of light and into darkness and forbidden knowledge. When he stepped out of light, he stepped into darkness where there was forbidden knowledge. It would corrupt his wisdom. It would corrupt everything that he knew that was pure and righteous and everything that he saw God engineer with all physics and everything, it would become corrupted. And because of his judgment from God, he wanted everyone else to suffer as he would suffer. Is everybody up with me? He stepped out of the light into the darkness and forbidden knowledge, which also corrupted heaven. And the Lord removed him because he was now a corruption, a contamination. And when the Lord removed him, he went to the second heaven. Lucifer was removed. And he was also first removed to serve Adam. Adam was created until Adam fell by Eve, who fell by partaking of the forbidden knowledge that Satan was placed in charge of the whole earth again. But this time his, his place of running the earth would be from the second heaven. And that's where his kingdom is. And his seed went into mankind and contaminated mankind. Why? What is that contamination? Forbidden knowledge. Why? Because it blinds, doesn't it? It steals, kills, and destroys everything of God. In Genesis chapter 3, forbidden knowledge. This forbidden knowledge is still with us. Still promoted. Colleges and schools. It's in the medical field. It's in some churches. Forbidden knowledge. It's in our government. It's all over. Forbidden knowledge now rules this earth. In Genesis 3 and verse 1, would you read it? Now the serpent was more what? Cunning. So we went from powerful and wisdom to what? Cunning, crafty, deceitful. Amen? And then any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, as God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. In other words, you're going to partake. The woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruits of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, which is the forbidden knowledge. God said, you shall not eat lest you die. And the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die because he's the promoter of lies. He's a murderer. He's a fornicator. He is perverse and evil. There isn't one clean, righteous thing about him or his kingdom. They carry no one ounce of love. There's no love there. They lust, not love. He said, for God knows that in a day you eat of it, your eyes will be open. Be open to what? Forbidden knowledge. And it would close their eyes to eternal knowledge. And they would start their death process. Is everybody okay? Said knowing good and evil. 
Verse 6, so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, self, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, but it really wasn't the wisdom from God, it was called demonic wisdom, wasn't it? Forbidden wisdom that corrupts. Remember, everything of the world and everything of Satan's kingdom does nothing but corrupt. It defiles. It perverts. It enslaves. It brings bondage. It brings torment. It brings lies. It brings hatred. It brings jealousy and rage. And it kills. The tree, to make one wise, didn't make them too wise, did it? In fact, it made them pretty stupid. So, she took of its fruit, ate, and she also deceived her husband and gave her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. Remember before, they were naked but not ashamed because there was a purity. This, this time, all the intents were evil. The other intents were pure and righteous. So they sold fig leaves together, made themselves coverings, and they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord because they could no longer see the Lord. They could no longer see the serpent. They partaken of the forbidden fruit and they became blind. And from the presence of the Lord God Almighty and the trees of the and the Lord called to Adam and said, Where are you like he did not know where he was? Amen. And he did know where he was, didn't he? So from wisdom to cunning, deceiving, trickery, crafty, wicked power, Lucifer went. Is everybody with me? Causing Eve to step out of light into darkness, taking Adam with her, corrupting the garden. Remember, Lucifer was removed for corrupting heaven. Adam was removed for corrupting the garden. Oh, hallelujah. And had been removed also, like Lucifer, corrupting all human race. That's why Eve is known as the mother of all living sin. Forbidden knowledge. Psalm 51. Because we were created in a free will process, God could only warn them. He would not force them. Amen? He would not interfere, interfere with their free will because God has a free will. That's why it's important to be born again, isn't it? Amen? In Psalm 51, in verse 1, would you read it with me? Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Now, a transgression is an act. It is the act of submitting to forbidden knowledge. And forbidden knowledge is carried by the presence of evil. So sin is the presence of evil that carries forbidden knowledge. Is everybody with me? When you listen to it or you obey it, you submit to it, and you do the act of its influence, you bring a transgression. Amen? That transgression, that act, is called a transgression. The results of that act brings a curse. That curse is called iniquity. That iniquity curse comes upon you and your family line until it is broke and removed. So he said, blot out my transgressions. Watch this. Verse 2, read it with me. Wash me thoroughly from my what? Iniquity, which is the inherit. Those are curses. And cleanse me from my what? Sin, forbidden knowledge. The presence of evil. For I what? Acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you and you only have I sinned. And done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in what? 
iniquity and a curse. And in sin, my mother, what? Conceive me. See, we're all born in the curse. That's what death is, isn't it? And we're, we all were brought forth in the presence of darkness. Has everybody got that? That's, how, that's why we need to be born again. When people are not born again, they're still under the forbidden knowledge. All kinds of religions. All kinds of belief systems. All kinds of heresies. All kinds of things. All kinds of lies and theories and deceptions and myths and fables. Now you got the Darwin theory and you got this theory. They can't prove anything but they believe theories. In fact, it's been disproved so many times it's ridiculous. We did not come from animals. Amen? I like bananas, but it doesn't mean I'm, I came from an ape. May act like one once in a while, but praise God. <laughs> you know. Verse 6. Is everybody there? Behold, you desire truth in the what? Inward parts. And in the hidden part, you will make me to know what? Wisdom. Now he's talking about another wisdom. That's eternal wisdom. Purge me with hyssops and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my what? Iniquities. Create in me a what? Clean heart, O oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. And do not cast me away from your presence. And do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Why? The Holy Spirit. Even David knew about the Holy Spirit. Amen? They all knew about the Holy Spirit. Why? He brings the presence of God, doesn't he? Restore to me the joy of your salvation. And uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will be converted to you. In other words, repentance washes our reactions to the presence of evil called transgressions. Amen? The Holy Spirit, by the restoring of the Holy Spirit, he restores us back into God's presence. He counsels us, corrects us, and convicts us. His purpose is to constantly expose forbidden knowledge so we can repent because there's acts of forbidden knowledge so that we can get back in place and position so the Lord can get something to us because he's a father that wants to give to his children, not take. But the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Amen? He's a loving daddy. Hallelujah. So you and I were born into forbid forbidden knowledge that corrupts. So that knowledge has been passed down, hasn't it? From generation to generation to generation. In Luke 4. Now, God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, but that's not forbidden knowledge. That's eternal knowledge. <clears throat> because if they don't know eternal knowledge, then they believe and live according to forbidden knowledge. Luke 4, verse 1. Is everybody there? I'm almost there. There we go. Let's speak it together. Then Jesus being what? Filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan, and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Now, the only way you can overcome evil is to be led by the Spirit. But the only way to be led by the Spirit is to be filled with the Spirit. Does everybody get this? So he was led in the wilderness to, to be uh, led in the wilderness 
being tempted for 40 days by the devil. And in those days he ate nothing, and afterward when he had ended, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. But Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Wow. <laughs> Man is not going to live. Okay, so what's he saying? The bread he was speaking about at this point in time was called forbidden knowledge. But Jesus was expressing, man cannot live by that alone. But man can live by what God says because that is bread of life. Then the devil, taking him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in the moment of time. And the devil said to him, All this authority I will give you and their glory. For this has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all is yours. Look at how many souls have sold out for that. Look at how many famous people have sold their souls, how many musicians, how many individuals that are well-known now, movie stars that have sold their souls out by this same temptation, forbidden knowledge. And Jesus answered and said, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Then he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He shall give his angels, angels charge over you to keep you. And in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Let me tell you, the devil knows the scriptures more than we do. And he quotes them all the time. I know a bunch of devils that can quote scriptures, but their fruits stink. Why? Because they live out of their head, their mind, not their heart. There's that false righteousness. And Jesus answered and said to him, It has been said, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. He was basically rebuking him. Now when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until a what? Opportune time. So your victory in the one battle is not over. He comes at an opportune time, sometimes when you least expect it. Amen? But you overcome by being led, by being filled with the Spirit, so you can be led by the Spirit. And what are we doing? We are overcoming temptations of forbidden knowledge. The reaction to them. The correspondence with them. Exodus chapter 20. And verse 1. Let's speak it together, please. Everybody there? And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before you. Did he bring you out of the house of bondage? Amen. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourselves a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Look at how many people worship statues. They put flowers in them. They, do all, they even make coffee for them. All kinds of stuff. They bow down. They kiss them. They put them on their uh, car, dash, car dashes and whatever. They let them in. <laughs> they wear them. Hallelujah. Verse 5. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am my jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me. So what happens is he visits all the way up to the third and fourth generation and it recycles until somebody breaks it. That's called iniquity. But showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commands. 
You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Today I was bringing, I had my car was filled with pastries and stuff, and I went by this place and opened it up, and this guy goes, Jesus Christ. I said, yes, he brought it. And he looked at me said, yes, the Lord brought this to you, brother. You may partake. I thought, as you repent. <laughs> Verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God, and that you shall do no work, you nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. Now, we know that when the Lord came, he came and fulfilled these, as everybody understand. In fact, that's why they were real upset with him, because he healed somebody on the Sabbath day. <laughs> and in six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God has given you. You shall not what? Murder. Now, when you begin to look at these things, this is all forbidden knowledge, isn't it? What's God doing? He's exposing it. That's what the law was doing, was exposing it. It did not give you the strength to overcome it. It just gave you the exposure so that they could sacrifice an animal because they recognized it. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. You shall, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor's. Now all the people witnessed the thunderings and the lightning flashes, the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they trembled and stood afar off. You betcha. This was the law that exposes forbidden knowledge. Amen? In Deuteronomy 7. But those who are led by the Spirit are half. Amen? Jesus paid the price so that you and I can be led by the Spirit and fulfill the requirement. Deuteronomy 7. Well, we'd be sacrificing animals every single day. In verse 1, please. Let's speak it. When the Lord your God brings you into the land which you go to possess, and he casts out many nations before you, the Hittites, the Gergites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Pessites, and the Parasites, <laughs> and the Hivites, and the Jezebites, and every other kind of bite. That's why they bite. They're evil. These were known as giants. Corrupted DNA. Seven nations greater than and mightier than you. And when the Lord your God delivers them over to you, you shall conquer them and utterly destroy them. You shall make no covenant with them, nor shall show mercy to them. Why? What do they carry? Forbidden knowledge. Nor shall you make marriages with them. You shall not give your daughter to their son, nor take their daughter for your son. For they will turn your sons away from following me to serve other gods. So the anger of the Lord was, will be aroused against you and destroy you suddenly. Thank God for mercy. Amen. But thus you shall deal with them and you shall destroy their altars and break down their sacred pillars and cut down their wooden images and burn their carved images with fire. For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for himself. We are a people for himself. A special treasure above all the peoples of the face of the earth. 
The Lord did not set his love on you nor choose you because you were more in number than any other people, for you were least of all peoples. But because the Lord loves you and because he would keep the oath which he swore to your fathers, the Lord has brought you out, of the, out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of bondage, from the hand of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Therefore know that the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God, who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commands. And he repays those who hate him to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack with him who hates him. He will repay him to his face. Therefore you shall keep the commandment, the statutes, and the judgments which I command you today to observe them. Then it shall come to pass because you listen to these judgments and keep and do them that the Lord your God will keep you from the covenant and mercy which he swore to your fathers. He will love you and bless you and multiply you. He will also bless the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your land, your grain and your new wine and your oil, the increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flock in the land which he swore to your fathers to give you. Amen? So, don't be unevenly yoked with forbidden knowledge. <laughs> Real simple. Acts 17. You know, it's amazing because at that period of time, judgment was quick. Not that things don't, not that people can't fall in a snare or trap. But so many times people continue on because judgment's not released and they think that oh i guess god you know just forgave me and it's over with and whatever no everybody reaps what he sows amen, amen. nobody escapes that repentance does not stop the reaping Has everybody got it it doesn't stop the reaping everyone reaps what he sows no matter what but it stops more of what we would reap amen the quicker we repent the less we reap the longer we take to repent, the more we reap. Nobody gets away with it. Nobody. But see, the enemy has people convinced that it's okay with God because judgment's not been released. Amen? But it will come. Acts 17. Unless a person repents, amen? Amen? You got to repent and get back into position. But you're still going to reap. But what you're going to reap, God will use for your training. If you truly are repentant. Where that's where the word says all things work to the good to those who love the Lord. Acts 17 and verse 22. Speak it, then Paul stood in the midst of Areopagus. And said, men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are very religious. Why did he say that? He said, for as I was passing through and considering the objects of your worship. In other words, they had all these idols, false altars. I even found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing him, I want to proclaim to you. Because all those little puny little idol things that you keep carving and making statues of and feeding coffee and throwing flowers on and kissing and all this other stuff. Those are not God. They don't hear you. They don't breathe. And they ain't going to do nothing for you. They are not your lucky charm. They are your cursed item. <laughs> And they will bring demonic activity. It's amazing how many Christians I still see with those wind catcher things. And many of them, I, man, I went to one house and the guy's a Christian and he's doing Bible study and he's selling wind catchers. I said, man, do you know that those things are a cursed item? They do not catch no wind. They draw demonic activity. He says, no, they keep people's spirits away. I said, where's that in the Bible? And you teach the Bible? I made sure I stayed away from him. I don't know when judgment's coming. 
And he teaches children the Bible. Anyways. Foolish doctrines. It's because people are not hearing the truth. Hearing all these fables and whatever. They don't teach people about accursed items. It's feel good. That's it. Just feel good. Jesus make you feel good, man. No, you don't have to worry about judgment. Just go out and feel good. Do what you want. Do what thou want. Satan's doctrine. Do what you feel like, and it's okay. Don't worry. You, you get away with it, man. Same thing the devil told Eve. It's okay. God's a liar. Don't worry about it. He's just holding back your good times. Hello? Don't worry. You just go out there and do whatever you want. You won't reap, liar. Pants are already on fire. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's called forbidden knowledge. Verse 24. God who made the world and everything in it since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. Nor is he worshipped with man, men's hands as though he needed anything, since he gives to all life, breath, and all things. And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on the face of the earth, and has determined their what? Pre-appointed times and what? Boundaries. Of their dwellings. Now why would God set boundaries? To try and protect us from what? Forbidden knowledge. So that they should seek the Lord and hope that they might grow for him and find him though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being as also some of your own poets have said for we are also his offspring. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone or something shaped by art or man's devising. Truly these times of stupidity and ignorance God has overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to what? Turn away. Turn away from them. Repent. Why? Because judgment is at the door. Because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He will give assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. And when they heard the resurrection of the dead, some mocked while others said, we will hear you again on this matter. You know, the enemy plays so many parts with multiple voices and influences in multiple ways. Again, God is not mocked. Whatever man sows, he will reap. And there is an age of accountability. And I truly believe that age of accountability is on a person, individual person, a person that knows. In other words, when that person understands, accountability is there. Is everybody with me? So that person could be 14, could be 15, could be 13. When that person truly understands, accountability starts. Although they've not seen any children, children, children in hell. Amen? Because they're covered. But there is an age of accountability. And in that age of accountability, that's why once we are told, and truly I believe that anything over 16, is, that, that's it. You either got it or you don't. But then there, again, then there's the younger too. Either you're going to serve God or you're going to serve the devil. And who you serve when you die is when you, where you go. So the prayers of the saints are keeping the other ones still alive. But then who knows when God is lifting the protection. We never know. Amen. Is everybody okay? So he's saying don't be unevenly yoked, right? 
And, and so in this, it's important that we get this understanding because boundaries are set. Now, the Holy Spirit's the one that sets boundaries. He's the one that sets the boundaries. If you're filled with the Spirit and led by the Spirit, you will walk in the boundaries. Those boundaries are narrow and difficult. And then they begin to open up more the more you earn God's trust. Eventually, he knows that you are setting the boundaries. Does everybody know? You are looking for the Holy Spirit to set the boundaries all the time. All the time. No matter what you go, where you go, what you're doing, there's always a boundary set. Okay, that's enough talking about that. Goodbye. That's enough listening about that. Goodbye. You'd be watching a movie and all of a sudden garbage starts coming up and it's like, okay, that's enough. Amen? There's music that comes on. All of a sudden it's like, all right, that's enough. I'm out of there. Done. So there are boundaries that we must be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And if we ignore those boundaries, forbidden knowledge begins to take us over. Amen? And Galatians 3. Jesus introduced us to the Holy Spirit. He said, here he is. He will speak on my behalf. And whatever he hears, he's going to speak. He's going to guide you. He's going to teach you. Amen? So without fellowship with the Holy Spirit, you walk in deception. Amen? Is everybody okay? Galatians 3 and verse 19. Let's speak it together. What purpose then does the law serve? It was added because of transgressions till the seed which would come to whom the promise was made. And it was appointed through angels by the hand of the mediator. Now a mediator does not mediate for only one, but God is one. It is the law that then is the law then against the promises of God? Certainly not. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, truly righteousness would have been by the law. But the scriptures have confined all under sin, that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe or follow. But before faith came, we were kept under guard by the law, kept for the faith, which would afterward be revealed. Therefore, the law was our what? Tutor to bring us to Christ so that we would meet the mentor who is the Holy Spirit. That we might be justified by faith. But after faith has come, we are no longer under the tutor. We are under the what? Mentor of the Holy Spirit. For you are all sons of God, through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you who were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. That baptism is actually repentance. Does everybody understand it? First repentance by repenting. Lord, why? You get wa That's the first baptism you get. It's called washing of the blood. The second baptism is for power. That's in Christ, in the anointing. So the first one awakens, the second one gives power. Amen? The first one cleanses, awakens, the second one brings power. For you and I were baptized in Christ with power. There's neither, verse 28, there's neither Jew nor Greek, there's neither slave nor free, there's neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. And heirs according to the promise of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's powerful. Those are the promises that come down the line. All the way to me and you. Now I'm not Jewish. Don't claim to be Jewish. But I'm no longer Italian either. I'm Christ. My blood now runs from the throne room of God. Not from my culture. I'm free. I don't even eat spaghetti every Sunday. In fact, I haven't eaten spaghetti in who knows how long. I hate it. I got spaghettied out. It's nothing but filler. Anyways, 1 Corinthians 2. <laughs> 
Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Praise God. First Corinthians chapter 2. Let's grow there. In verse something. Verse 6. Let's speak it together. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of what? This age. Why? Because it's forbidden knowledge. Nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to what? Nothing. Why? Because they're under forbidden knowledge. But we speak the wisdom of who? God in a mystery. The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. For whose glory? For us. Oh, that we might know who we are. For which none of the rulers of this age knew, for if they had known, they would have not have crucified the Lord of glory. Verse 9. Let's read it. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who what? Love him. But God has revealed them to us through his what? His spirit. For the Spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. In other words, the eternal things of God. He's going to get all the good things of Daddy. All the things that bring life. Amen? It brings strength and life and power so that you and I can constantly overcome the forbidden knowledge and expose it. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of a man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things which have been freely given to us by God. Powerful. These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but what the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man, the carnal man, the unborn man. Amen? The unborn of the spirit man. It's called natural carnal. Does not receive the things of the spirit of God. The one who lives in the outer court does not receive the things of the spirit of God. For they are foolishness to him. You know what? They don't care. They think this is all foolish. They think it's just, they're crazy. This is just foolish, man. Just another thing. Knowing, not knowing that they are actually dying. They are perishing. For that is foolish to them, nor can they know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ, and we know all things. James chapter 3. So are the works of the flesh fruits of forbidden knowledge? Anybody? Yeah. The works of the flesh are the fruits of forbidden knowledge. Where did that knowledge come from? James 3. Is everybody there? Verse 13. Let's speak it. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and what? Demonic. It's called forbidden, isn't it? For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and everything are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first what? Pure. Then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield or submit, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. For the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Hebrews 26. Hebrew.
When I say uh, Hebrews 10, I'm sorry. Verse 26. <laughs> Hebrews 26. That's good. We just added a few more chapters. Hebrews 10. Verse 26. For if we willfully sin after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there is no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. There's no more covering. Amen. But a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. Anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much worse punishment do you suppose will be he thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing and insulted the Spirit of grace? Ouch. Ouch. That is associating forbidden knowledge. Amen? It's associating with forbidden knowledge, willful sin. In James chapter 4. In verse 4. 4-4. Four, four. Let's speak it. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Why? A friend of the world under the world is what? Forbidden knowledge. That's how it rules this whole place. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will what? He will flee from you. In James 1, verse 12. James 1, verse 12. Let's speak it. Blessed is the man who what? Endures, overcomes forbidden knowledge. For when he has been approved... He will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I'm tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires. Woo! His own affections. In other words, what he feels, what he believes. And that enticement is brought forth by forbidden knowledge. Why? Listen, forbidden knowledge always promotes rebellion. Always. So he's drawn away by his own desires and what? Enticed. Then when this desire is conceived, it gives forth birth, uh, it gives birth to sin, and sin when it's full grown brings forth what? Death. So blessed are those who overcome this forbidden knowledge. But cursed are those who accept it. Second Corinthians six. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of light, works of the flesh, all the things that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. That is called forbidden knowledge. There's something the Lord says very powerfully. He says what in verse fourteen? Don't be what unevenly yoked with unbelievers. Why? Because then you're being yoked with forbidden knowledge. Because that's what unbelievers carry. That's all they know. For what fellowship is righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion is light with darkness? And what accord is Christ with Belial? Or what part is a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God had said, I will dwell in them. I'll walk among them. I'll be their God. I'll be their daddy. And they'll be my people, my children. If what? Verse 17. If they'll do something, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. And don't touch that forbidden knowledge. It's called unclean. And I will receive you. I'll be a father to you. And you'll be my sons and my daughters. Revelation 22. 
In verse 12, Jesus said, Behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me, to give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his what? Commandments. So by doing his commandments, you are rejecting forbidden knowledge. That they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. Now, these commandments are, are they, they're not just like the Ten Commandments. These commandments are what... Every time God speaks, it's a command. Does everybody get it? So what he's asking you to do is a command. Those are commandments. It says when the Lord showed up, he gave commandments through the Holy Spirit to his disciples. In other words, he was telling them what to do. That's his commandments. Blessed are those who obey his commandments. That's what he asks us to do, his word. Amen? And, may, and he will give them the right to the tree of life, and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs, demonized individuals, and sorcerers, and sexual, immoral, and murderers, and idolaters, and addicts, and whoever loves and practices a lie. Why? Because they're participating with forbidden knowledge. And I, Jesus, have sent my angels to testify to you these things in the churches, I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and the morning star and the spirit. And the bride say, come, let him who hears come, and let him who thirsts come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify to anyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of this book, of this prophecy, God will take away his part from the book of life, from the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. Powerful. And I want to close up with Matthew 25. See, so many times we just look at sin as sin, but not realizing that sin is the presence of evil carrying forbidden knowledge. Anything that exalts itself ab above the knowledge of God or against the knowledge of God is forbidden knowledge. Amen? Matthew 25 and verse 40. And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly I say to you, and inasmuch as you did to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did to me. Then he will also say to those on the what? Left. Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. Now I want you to understand that this is more than just physical. This is spiritual food, telling people the truth, amen? Introducing them to the spirit of the living God. I was a stranger and you did not take me in, naked and you did not clothe me, sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer him saying, Lord, when do we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick in prison and did not minister to you? Then he'll answer them saying assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Hallelujah. So it's our responsibility to declare truth. Whatever the cost. Amen. But again, don't argue with a demon. You can't counsel a demon. That's all they'll do is suck you in the ring and make you look like an idiot. Amen. Don't counsel the demon. You just walk away. You bind it. Eventually that person's going to come to his senses. Amen. After you hit enough walls of reality, then they'll call out on the Lord and ask for help. Amen. But in the meantime, remember that sin is more than just
the presence of evil. It is carrying forbidden knowledge, which we do not want to participate because that forbidden knowledge is being more and more enforced into this country. More and more. It's being forced right now. In fact, people will be forced to take it and it will result in a mark of the beast. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Let the seeds that have been imparted in us tonight be covered by the blood and protected by the blood of Jesus. Let them grow and bear fruit for your glory and prepare us and bring to remembrance Holy Spirit because you are a restorer. We ask that you continue to keep us in the presence of the Lord. Guide us to all truth. Expose all the wickedness and snare our enemies in their traps while we escape safely that we may bring glory to the name above all names, Jesus, and rescue souls by the anointing of your truth in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah.